Hello everyone, Zero Fossil Fuel. Today is Sunday, September 18, 2011, and this is a update from the lab on the Muller Motor Project. A uh, number of components arrived the other day from McMaster Car, and I uh, have completed the teardown of the original uh, Muller Motor prototype that was assembled using the uh, 3 8 inch Lexan that I had built my first model with. That piece will probably end up on eBay, <coughs> including the rotor. So uh, be looking, be looking for this at the uh, Zero Fossil Fuel eBay store, coming to you soon. And uh, if anybody wants to try their hand using using that that particular uh, assembly, then uh, they'd be off to a very good start. All right, so here's the magnet keeper assembly. As you can see, I have the neodymium magnet hanging uh, above the magnet under test. The magnet under test is simply held in place by a piece of acrylic, thin piece of acrylic over the top that I can swing out of the way to load new pieces in. The, uh, the main, main portion of the magnet keeper is calibrated in degrees rotationally so I can take and spin it around underneath the neodymium magnet now at 90 degrees that doesn't make any difference but if you'll notice these marks on the back here I can also take this assembly and tilt it and check the magnetic fields at an angle there's a guide at the bottom created by two thicknesses of the acrylic over top one sheet here and it just slides underneath like that so I can rotate it and if I want to check it at 22 and a half degrees I set it there if I want to check it at 45 degrees I set it there and then I rotate rotate this section of the magnet keeper to check the magnetic strength or the pull in terms of ounces as indicated by the digital display of the digital pull scale. The height of the magnet of the uh, cylindrical neodymium magnet above the test fixture is adjusted at the top with a wing nut on a one quarter by twenty stainless steel rod that is bent into a hook simply to hang the digital pull scale on it. Here's the uh, parts that I ordered from McMaster Car. I've got uh, 1500 feet of number 22 gauge wire got a couple of uh, 3 8 inch compression shaft collars a couple of 3 8 inch precision needle bearings the uh, hardened 3 8 inch steel shaft that's 7 inches long and for that a couple of flanges that were machined for me by Doug Nivet aka getting wet in the chat room this right here is one of the bulkhead fittings that I ordered from eBay. I have 18 of these. The coils will be uh, assembled inside of these. And uh, right now I'm waiting on getting an uh, offer acceptance for a tap that will allow me to create additional nuts so that I can use these bulkhead fittings to adjust the gap of the coils to the rotor individually. And these right here are plastic spindles that are used for cable management uh, around telecommunications 66 punch blocks. Any of you in the telecom industry will know what that is. And if you've ever walked up to a, a plywood panel where all the wires come into the building for, for telephone service, you'll see rows and rows of these that uh, they use to snake the wires back and forth between those vertical blocks that the wires are, 
are punched down to. I'm going to actually pour my cores directly into these spindles and then I will end up curing them vertically in a vacuum chamber and then cutting off the top half of this as waste material and that will be my, my coil which will insert directly into the bulkhead fittings just like that and then I'm going to glue them secure them in place just by gluing them right in the right on the opening of the of the bulkhead fittings so it's coming along uh, the other thing that, that I got from McMaster car were three sheets of 3 8 inch phenolic this is the XX grade Garolite uh, should be perfectly suited for the uh, the next build the new, the next rotor is going to be 10 inches in diameter as opposed to 8 and the uh, the frame will be 12 by 12 I will be um, taping the procedure on creating the the round rotor disc as uh, as precisely as humanly possible using nothing but my little drill press here and I will be uh, creating an extension for the table of the drill press to bring the table out to about here and then uh, put some pinholes in the in the wood extension that will allow me to take the uh, the disc and rotate the disc directly underneath the head of a um, uh, a carbide straight bit for a router that will give me the perfect circle that I'm looking for and I will also use that same that same table extension then to uh, drill out the openings for the neodymium magnets so that they will perfectly they will be perfectly spaced radially from the center so that's it for the update on the Muller motor project I also want to make mention here that uh, there are 13 of the 150 amp constant current pulse width modulators in my uh, in my PayPal storefront at altenergy.org so if any of you are interested in uh, picking up one of my pulse width modulators they now are available and uh, on sale to the public so uh, the only thing I ask is limit two per person uh, there's quite a waiting list for these I have been receiving a lot of inquiries so I sent out an initial mailing to those who first inquired to give them a, a shot at purchasing those and they've had their opportunities so now they're, they're open to the public. I hope you're all well. Uh, please subscribe to my channel if you have not. Please, please rate my videos and please comment below. Uh, always appreciate your comments. The more comments we get on the videos, the more recognition they get by YouTube and the more people get, get a chance to see them. All opinions welcome, just please be polite. Everyone take care. Peace.